Saturday, one o'clock noontime. I was just about to go to the gym because I finished recording the vocals for one song. Just one more to go, and then all the vocals for the album are recorded. Um, what's my point? My point is that I read a DM from my buddy Rob, um, who sent me a question. He saw a logo, Faderhead logo, on a flyer, and um, he said, you know, that's really interesting, the logo there, which is the one that I used, it's a font I used for the Anima and Machina album, um, or EP or whatever that was, I don't know. Uh, he said, that's very different from the Faderhead Din 1541 or 1451 or whatever the the font is that I used there. And then I have a different font that's really thin. And then I have a logo with like a, a Venom type head that has a different font. And um, he asked, what did he ask? Let me read this. Let me read the question. Uh, if you want an identity as an artist besides persona and sound, what about the logo? This is a good question. Uh, Rob is a smart guy, also a good sound designer. I've known him, I think, since 2001. Long time. Um, so what's the point here? What am I trying to say? The, the, it's a good question, which kind of applies and kind of doesn't. Um, I think at this point, there is something to be said, like, let's, let's talk about Faderhead. At this point, there is something to be said for writing the whole name, because if you know the name, you can read it, and it doesn't matter what the, what the font type is, because it, it's not just an F. You know, if, if it's just an F and maybe, I don't know, something else, like a little graphic symbol there, then it would make a lot of sense um, to have the logo be consistent because consistent, F in general doesn't mean that much. But if the logo says Faderhead or it says Mercedes-Benz or it says, uh, I don't know, Siemens or something like that, it really isn't that important, especially if you've been around as a company or as an artist which I have now for 15 years. This is this year's 15 years of Faderhead. Um, it's not really that important because people can fucking read. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of where it actually matters. Like which which band has a logo that is just not their name in there? I, I can't think of a single one. Um, if you are starting out, if you're starting out, maybe it it makes sense. Um, but then at the same time, nobody knows you if you're starting out. So maybe they see your name somewhere and they're like, yeah, who the fuck is that? I don't know. They probably won't even register unless your name is really weird. If your name is like, I don't know, the motherfucking Jujus of Satan or something like that. And people are like, that's an interesting name. What do they mean by that? Or um, what kind of music do those guys do? But if you use Arial font or, uh, I don't know, Times New Roman font or whatever, uh, doesn't really matter that much except for what the font says about your music. And by that I mean, let's say you use um, a very futuristic font, then that will say this might be electronic music and it might be, I don't know, modern sounding. If you use like a very uh, like calligraphy font, it, it might be something like uh, medieval music. It might be maybe some, you know, psytrance because they have or uh, like they have a connection to nature or something like that. Um, it's probably not gonna be uh i don't know jazz something like that uh if you use one of these what do you call them i don't even know what you call those um uh like like the black metal scribbles there's not gonna be a lot of pop music with black metal scribble logos so that that's what the logo 
would say and the font that you choose would say about the band. For me, I've changed my font so often. I'm not going to say every album, but very often because I just want to have something that fits stylistically with the artwork and with the whole presentation of the of the the cycle of time or something like that. Like let's say the um the Elixir font I used for Night Physics and uh, for the Asteria tour and stuff like that, which obviously didn't uh, happen that much, but uh, I'm not sure I'm going to use that anymore, simply because it has to fit with whatever um, they'll be on, on the artwork or something. Maybe it fits really well, maybe something else would be better. That was my rationale for changing the, the font type so often because i really don't think it matters um if you can still read what it says because as long as there are not many different bands called faderhead then it should be no issue and if there are many different bands called faderhead then you kind of have to figure out how how to either um sue them <laughs> get the name or change your name Tuesday morning, 6.40. Yeah, it's a little early, but uh, I just woke up, I don't know, at uh, 6, 6 o'clock. And uh, decided, well, I could use the time and uh, get on top of some production work. Because, I mean, that's the phase right now. If you're following me on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter... Um, You've probably seen this little spreadsheet that I have where I mark all the songs and all the phases. And the first phase is always writing the song. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious. Um, but that songwriting means you, you write like the chords and the beat and, and uh, I don't know, maybe some synths. And then you write the lyrics, which is an extra. Actually, it's an extra... Uh, column in my in my sheet not necessarily write the lyrics but write the vocal melody maybe with fake lyrics so that's songwriting and write proper lyrics that's the next part and uh, I just finished the third part which is recording all the proper vocals because most of my demos they just exist for years sometimes um, without proper vocals, so I just go like, yeah, snare, hey, hey, yeah, oh, yo, yeah, well, something like that, you know, and, uh, and then I have to go and uh, <laughs> turn that into something that makes any sense. Um, so I'm uh, the first three phases: phase one, songwriting; phase two, lyric finishing; phase three, proper vocal recording. Those three are finished, and. Um, I think sometimes people think that when I'm done with one of these columns that I'm done with the whole album, but obviously then it just starts again. So uh, making an album is kind of like life. Uh, if you have these, if you look at the spreadsheet, you start and you finish something and then it's back to square one. And then you finish something and then it's back to square one. And then you finish something, and then it's back to square one, and then the next thing comes. So right now, a, a production phase, um, that's column number four, and that means now that all the vocals are properly recorded and that the songs are written and that all the lyrics are there, um, I have to add all the details, all the little things, the transitions from one part to the other. And the last chorus usually should be the most powerful or most exciting one. Um, uh, either uh, Raphael or Yannick from uh, Dance Floor Gladiators, I sent them a demo um, a while ago. And one of them, I don't remember who of the two was, was it, said, I don't understand how you made the last chorus even more powerful than before because I didn't think it was possible. That kind of stuff, that is production. Um, when you add stuff that people are not expecting or um, when you choose a synth. I mean, you could have any synth go melody-wise, doot, 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 whatever. But to find the right sound for this doot, 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 doot line, 
that is a production decision because the writing itself means write like uh, on in this part I want the notes to be do 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 whatever. Um, but production means in this case which sound should be playing and why. Is this a song that sounds a little more eighties? Will within the context of the record and the context of the song should the I don't know, should the snare sound be like this or should it be something else? Um, things like that. To me, this used to be, interestingly, this used to be one of my least favorite parts of the album. I used to say, uh, if I had an assistant, I would just write the basic song idea and let them do the rest. These days, I, uh, I don't agree anymore. Um, then again, a lot of the stuff I pick early these days, like during songwriting, um, a lot of the stuff is done. But uh, yeah, so that's my phase right now. I have the first single and the second single. I did them yesterday, which was kind of, uh, wasn't that very hard because they were pretty fleshed out already. So uh, now it's, what is it now? Six... 46 um rambling for five minutes already um so i'm i have a uh phone call with daniel the cover designer tonight um and i hope that other than going to the gym i might get through maybe four songs today that would be amazing my my schedule is two songs a day but uh my morning appointment has canceled and I woke up accidentally earlier than I thought. So maybe I can get through four songs and uh, be ahead of schedule. I love being ahead of schedule. Fader cast. Tuesday night, 1130. Uh, I just finished recording an interview with uh, my buddy Daniel. And we did that in English because he wanted it to be able to be viewed by not only Germans. And I have to say that uh, I really noticed the difference in my ability to express myself in English um, and in German, which is something that kind of surprised me and kind of didn't. Um, you might know or you might not that I have a German podcast with my friend Denny Delta Mode. And we have had this discussion um, if we should have the podcast in English or in German. And I kind of vehemently said, no, I don't think I can do it. And uh, I don't think the quality of both of us who are native German speakers and who speak fluent English, but... It's not our first language. Um, the, the quality won't be as good. And tonight I really noticed that I was right and that it was a good decision for for us to have the German podcast in German because um, it's a discussion and a thinking, thinking podcast. Um, it relies on us thinking really quickly. And uh, I noticed tonight in this interview thing that I really struggle to come up with concepts and words. And um, my brain goes ahead of my speaking while in German that doesn't happen like, uh, like it does in English, which kind of, I mean, it's kind of no understandable, but at the same time, most of my life, I actually thought it was the other way around that my English had, because I used it so much for 20 years or something since the, yeah, probably since, since maybe I was, when I was 15 to maybe till I was 40, I, I spoke a lot of English. I read and still read most, ex mostly exclusively English. I watch English TV or shows or something, but still it, um, because I don't speak that much English anymore. Um, it has deteriorated a little bit compared to the to German. And, uh, yeah, it was just interesting to notice that, um, 
that my German thinking and speaking works better than my English. Wednesday morning, 9.30. I just finished two songs. Well, the production of two songs, which was rather easy, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I think on one of them, what did I do on the... I added one synth at the end, and that was probably it. I'm not sure. That was already really well produced. Um, and on the other, I tried a bunch of stuff, but... Then I just added a shaker and switched a snare, and then then, we, then it was done. It was it's one of these things where you can make a song worse if you add more stuff. Oh, that that the last one uh, is booty time, the one uh, I talked about before, and that one has a very Nine Inch Nails closerish vibe, um, which. I like, and I also now am overthinking the whole thing completely. Uh, and by that, I mean, I'm now wondering, is that song really working on the album or not? And um, there's two two issues with that. First of all, it's a, like a blues industrial party song. And by that, I mean, blues industrial, what I'm saying here is uh, there are certain note intervals that you use when you play rock and blues riffs that are usually not used very often in industrial. Nine Inch Nails did that. I'm not sure if they do that anymore because I haven't listened to any of this stuff in many years. I like the newer albums. Um, so uh, the general vibe is different. Then, then again, it's a song about partying and other things um so there should be a different vibe to it and again i have to remind myself that different songs are good for like an album of 13 or whatever songs um on the other hand and that's the second part gillian doesn't like the song he said uh, you have better tracks it doesn't go with the album um, and unfortunately, Gillian has a very, very annoying personality trait of being right most of the time. Um, and I mean, this is really good because uh, whenever he says something with regard to, uh, re regards to the music, it means that it's a valuable opinion. At the same time, it doesn't help. It doesn't really help with me thinking less about the whole situation i think i should just you know i'm probably going to be done with most production stuff by the end of the week and i'm probably just gonna listen to all the songs while i have three beers or something like that and then um see what's going on i mean i could always put it as a bonus track or something but i'm not sure at the same time i'm, I'm thinking right now i like the topic a lot so maybe there's a remix in there that sounds different i'm not sure i'll have to i'll have to meditate about that Fader cast. wednesday two o'clock i just came back from the gym and i picked up um some test test uh, products that i got sent from printful Printful is the company that prints all my uh, online merch. And uh, because I have caps uh, in the Kickstarter, I will, you know, I'll have to order a bunch of caps at one company. And obviously, this is an item that I have no experience with manufacturing. So test items uh, were in order. So uh, they arrived today and they look really good. With the one problem that the underside of the uh, of the brim, like the front of the cap, that the underside is green, like it is with many, many, many caps, and to me that's completely not acceptable. So uh, I will have to I will have to find a different manufacturer for the caps because uh, green is not good. Um, 
for a black cap, especially if it's black on black uh, stitching, then that is not acceptable. Not a big, be, not a big deal in general, but uh, one of the typical little things that you know, if you don't test it, and then you order a hundred caps, uh, I would be very disappointed. I, I'm not sure most people would care, but I mean, I'm I'm making a black on black like black stitches black logo on black cap and then having the underside of the brim green that makes no sense whatsoever i also ordered a like a very dark print on black t-shirt and that to me doesn't look very good um although i haven't worn it yet i um only you know took it out of the out of the box and it was very wrinkly which is you know it's totally fine to get a wrinkly shirt in the mail but uh, on first look it didn't didn't look so good so um, I'm rethinking that idea because usually the other prints look really nice and uh, yeah well now I have to talk to some people about black caps with black underside brims Wednesday night 9.30 I just finished writing the basic idea for a really really good track um, hard future pop, something like that. Uh, for the upcoming album <laughs> in 2023, so not Year of the Serpent, that one's done. That one's finished. So the one afterwards, maybe it'll be a single in, in I don't know, October 2022. I don't know. We will see. But the, uh, this is a really, really good song. Very happy with it. And um, I have three ideas now that could make it on to the next album. We'll see, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's always the same thing. I said this before. As soon as the project, the current project is done, my brain starts to be happy and starts writing new ideas. And um, I mean, this it makes sense. I've been thinking about this album basically since Asteria was done, which is October 2019. Oh, even before. Maybe Asteria came out in October, so I had to finish it in August or something. So... For two years, my brain has been thinking about this album. Now that this album is done, it can think about uh, other things. So I'm very happy with that. The track is massive. Uh, the title right now is Where There's Summer, I'm Not. But that's probably too long, although I really like the po poetic nature of that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. Uh, it's in the lyrics of the chorus. And uh, there's other things that are easier but cheesier. <laughs> I like that. Easier but cheesier. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, very happy. Fader cast. Friday morning, 12 o'clock. Uh, well, noon, 12 o'clock. <laughs> um, I have been working uh, on another track for the album. And uh, that song has the working title, Sven Enselman's Disco. Sven Enselman is a very good friend of mine. Um, he's a DJ here in the Hamburg goth scene. I mean, he DJs all kinds of music. I think at a, at a time he DJed five nights a week or something. And some of those were goth nights. Um, and I'm not exactly sure. It might have been 2019, probably, something like that. I was at one of his parties uh and there wasn't that much going on so i just mainly hung out with him at the dj booth and we had a chat for an hour or something and then i went home and when i got home um as you might know whenever i go out i, I um, fire up turn on the studio so that when i get home and have an idea that i can record it quickly and at that night i had an idea and i you know made a song which uh very quickly even back then i mean that was probably before asteria um actually let me let me look it up right now i can i can just look at the uh, at the album production at the old cubase files that's the good part if you write in da -da -da -da. oh i'm wrong i'm wrong it was uh 5th of january 2020 so it was the new year it was before COVID, though um so very quickly this song turned out to be a top favorite to be on the album and uh i'm working on that right now and i had to uh text sven and say you know for this type of music because it's kind of like electronic wave 
goth wave or something like that. I'm not sure what that even means. Uh, I, I I asked him if it's unusual for tracks to have to be short, because if you make a, a club track that's electronic for goth, dark electro, techno, if it's only three minutes, most DJs won't play it. In EDM, that's different because they mix from drop to drop, but in um, in goth electro, they don't mix at all most of the time, uh, and in general, it's helpful if the DJ doesn't have to play the next song right away, just out of convenience. I mean, DJs want to fill time so they don't have to play 100 songs, but maybe 20 in a row. And um, the audience also wants to dance. And goth audiences are not very good at dancing <laughs> from feeling. Uh, they like to have rehearsed their dance to the particular song. So if if the song is only three minutes long, it's almost not worth running to the dance floor because it takes you 30 seconds to get to the dance floor and uh, then you might already be, be out of the song. Um, anyway, a long ramble here. So I asked him uh, if there's a time constraint and he said, no, it doesn't matter. Some songs are over five minutes, but that's only because the bands don't get to the point. So uh, this song turned out three minutes and 50, something like that. I'm very happy with it. It has, to me, it has a big, the Cure flavor, but also not, because, I mean, I don't think anything even remotely like uh, Robert Smith, I wish. If anyone knows Robert Smith, please get him in touch with me. I, <laughs> I really would like him to sing on one of my songs. Um, yes, so uh, Sven Enselman's Disco uh, will not be called Sven Enselman's Disco, of course, but uh, maybe he'll do a remix. Friday, four o'clock. I am done with the second song for today, which, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. Um, I didn't have to do much production, so I was trying to get stuff better. And once you are used to a demo, and this one, I don't know how long, this one's been around for a long time, uh, also like two years or something. Uh, once you're used to a demo, it gets hard to change it simply because you're used to it. Even if you objectively make it better, it doesn't seem like that while you make it better, uh, mainly because you're not used to it. And if you've heard the song, as I have many, many times, um, just different is worse. But um, that's when reference songs come in. For me, for a long time now, this has been uh, um, Neelix, one of the Neelix tracks. Uh, what is it called? One Nature, I think. It's uh, it's the one that we were supposed to work with him on uh, a while ago. Um, and then all sorts of stuff happened where in the end, Danny did some vocal stuff for it. I'm not exactly sure what, what happened there, but I got really annoyed. <laughs> um, uh, that Neelix track is really good. It's really loud and punchy. And uh, Gesaffelstein Pursuit is the other one because that's a little mm, less fast and uh, has more sub bass. And then there's obviously the Nine Inch Nails Closer, um, which is a very, very good sounding song. And uh, it's a little bit more towards the less compressed, older style of, of music. And uh, so having three very different uh, tracks is sometimes good. If I am doing slower stuff, I also use um, Boombox Cartel. I don't remember the song. Moon something. Moon Love, maybe? I don't, I'm not sure. Because that is the most insane amount of bass yeah, you can think of. And uh, so that gives me a good, uh, good reference spectrum. And um, changing songs just has to fit into the end state not you have to be aware of the fact that when you change them they might get better but you might think that they get worse simply because you're used to uh hearing what the song sounded for a year or a month a week for, for however long you've had it fader cast Thank you for listening to this episode of Fadercast. If you have any questions or suggestions, 
just email me at contact at faderet.com. You can obviously also find me on all the socials, uh, on Instagram at Faderhead Official and everywhere else under Faderhead. Please be a friend and tell a friend about this podcast. And until next time. Fader 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 Fader. Fader.